So, after the military coup, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was vilified and castigated. So, his personal belongings were either loot, burnt, or vandalized. So, from the far, the other side, you can see a headless statue mm. mounted right over there. Mm. Yes, yeah, so these are the effects of the, the coup. And this statue actually was erected when he was alive. Wow. And the statue used to be in front of the old parliament house, wow. the building just across the street. So it is during the coup that the statue was vandalized by the angry mob. So the statue's head is gone, arm, fingers, and part of leg. So the body of the statue was even missing. And it was refound nine years after the coup by the Museum and the Monument Board of Ghana. And it was their property. Until 2007, it was on loan to this place. So that's why it was left in that state. Then in 2009, the head of this statue, which was also missing for close to 43 years, was also found. So to keep the history at it is, that's why the head was separated from the body. So now we found the head, we are still looking for the left arm and the fingers. So in case you also have any information about it, you can let us know. Okay, please, let's... The, the, the engravings that we have on the wall are the symbols of his ideas. For instance, at the head of the entrance, we have three different heads overshadowed by the eagle. The ambience of those three heads are in the mood of dialogue. It is in dialogue that comes with sharing of ideas, wisdom, and building of consciousness. So we also have a typical adage in the Ghanaian language that says that two heads are better than one. Yes, yeah, so I've said earlier on that at the beginning of his political career, he was talking about a political unification of Africa. And the eagle who represents power, or you know, the eagle is a strong bird that represents power. So if Africa is united, Africa will represent a strong force in the whole world. Now, from the far end on the left side, on the left side, we have the king holding a sword. A sword represents a political or traditional rulership in the southern part of Ghana. When a sword is being raised like this, that means you are telling the whole world that you have power, you have authority. But when it is turned upside down, that means you surrender, you are in for peace. That's why, again, when you take a good look at the shape of the edges of the monument, it looks like a machete which is turned upside down. So it tells you that Nkrumah stands for peace. And he said we should all bury our hitches and live together. Now, on the other hand, the Queen Mother with the lingy staff with egg in her palm. You know, egg is a substance which is very delicate. If it is not handled meticulously and slip through your fingers, it's something that you can never recover. So they are representing egg as a political power in Africa, how power is so precious and fragile that when you have the power and you are not able to protect it and slip through your fingers, it's something that you can never recover. So for instance, his government was ousted. Upon all the attempts, he was not able, he was not able to get the power back until he died. So the queen mother actually was just pushing the king that as a king, you don't need to suppress your people. You don't also need to give them much freedom, but you need to balance it. So those two linguists with the linguist staff and the Sankofa bed, eh? 
Sankofa beans go back to your root. We should learn from the past. We shouldn't repeat the same mistake we made in the past. And those two linguists with the crossbow, that's the symbol of a jinkra, that shows the omnipresence of God. So God can never die. So though Nkuma, being the prophet of Africa, though he's dead, but his deed still lives on. And the hieroglyph, you know, Egypt, as an African country that had the earlier civilization, and he also married from the modern Egypt. So these are the diversity of culture that we have on the continent. So as an African, though we come from different backgrounds, with different color of skin, different languages, we are still one race. That's why you want all of us to be under one continental union government. All right, so please, let's get into the museum. No pictures, no pictures. No pictures. Yes, ma'am. Unfortunately, you know, I'm, I was, uh, I've never been able to record anything inside for you. So the best thing I could tell you, family, make your way out here, and uh, whatever we can show you, you can uh, check out uh, yourself physically. But um, Nkuma is uh, one of those legends where, it, you know, he deserved a park like this. He deserved the support of. You know, that way, we can you know, really just. You know, educate our people about people who have made the ultimate sacrifice uh, for us to have a nation of our own. So yes, family, the journey continues.